Hey, Glass, it's Joel Woodard here for a, uh, another demo this week. So I decided to do an ink drawing demo. I know um, it's probably been swirling in your mind. Um, it's, you're probably wondering how to get a handle on it. Uh, so I thought I would give everybody kind of a, a jump uh, this week to uh, try and alleviate some of the anxiety <laughs> that goes along with it. Um, before I get into everything, I wanted to go over a couple of things that uh, you'll be needing because we're not going to be doing ink drawing on newsprint paper. Um, any kind of uh, liquid that comes into contact with newsprint paper is just going to disintegrate it. Okay, It doesn't have the um, proper uh, weight to the paper necessary. So what you will be getting, well, what I'm going to show you what I use is uh, Blix drawing paper. Okay. Now, it doesn't matter what brand you get at all. You can get Blick, get Strathmore, Canson, whatever you want. If you have a preference right now, um, I know a lot of you are still just beginning, so um, probably doesn't matter. What is important about this, whatever brand you get, you want to get the 80 pound weight. Okay. That's what's important. Um, that'll give you the, um, it, it'll give you a good thickness to the paper and it's going to hold, um, hold liquid a little bit better. Um, actually a lot better than uh, newsprint. Okay. And I didn't want you to get something too thick, like watercolor paper. Um, if you ever buy that, uh, you'll notice it's a lot thicker than um, it's a lot thicker than this drawing paper. I think watercolor paper is like almost 200 pound paper. Um, so, and if you're interested, why they have the uh, weight ratings, um, the weight of that paper is based on the uh, ream of the paper when it comes out so in a ream of paper as i understand it is 500 sheets so 500 sheets of this paper that i just showed you is uh, 80 pounds okay uh 500 sheets of newsprint is a lot less it's uh, 30 pounds i believe so probably more than you wanted to know um I'll give you guys a link in the discussion of where uh, you can get this paper, 80-pound um, paper. I just did a quick Google search a few minutes ago. You could actually get a, a pad of uh, 24 sheets for about 15 bucks at Walmart, of all places. So you could do that or maybe go to Michael's. Michael's is good. They have those weekly 20% off coupons you can always uh, take advantage of. Okay, so that's the first thing I wanted to talk about. Second thing, wanted to talk about the brushes. Okay, so these are the brushes that I use that I recommend students buy. Okay, now speaking of Michaels again, you can go to Michaels and you can get a pack of these. I think. Uh, 10 or 12 come in a pack, a value pack for like $7.99, okay? It's a really good deal. I bought these, I don't know, maybe four years ago, and uh, I still use them, and they hold up uh, pretty well. You know, the bristles are in there pretty tight. You know, they're not uh, coming out um, easily, okay? So, uh, so yeah. So I'm going to do a demo with these since this is what you will um, be using. And um, however, my go-to brush for ink drawing is this right here. Okay, um, I like really big, broad strokes. I like um, you know, kind of chunky art, so to speak. You know, so uh, I really, really like this. So I'll be doing a demo with both of these, okay? Because um, I want to, I want you to see how um, 
both of those brushes work. And also, um, we're going to be doing multiple drawings because I don't want you guys to um, draw into uh, uh, one wet layer. Um, there is a technique called wet into wet that we'll talk about on Thursday, but uh, it's a little hard to control and uh, you guys might have a, a bit of a hard time with it. So uh, what I intend to do is uh, some multiple drawings. So I do start with one, get a first layer down, let that dry, get another sheet, start another drawing, let that dry. By the time you finish your second drawing, the first drawing should have dried enough for you to work back into it. At least that's the theory, you know? We'll see how well that works today, okay? So, I got my setup over here. I've got two cups of water. Um, they're filled about halfway up and one at the end of uh, the session today, both of these cups are gonna end up black, okay? But to start off, I have one cup for ink and the other cup is to kind of wash off your brush, okay? So we got our Higgins ink here. This came with uh, your kit. And I believe the one brush that came with your kit is, I don't know, similar to this, you know, this one little brush. It's not, it's just not enough to achieve what we want to achieve with this. Um, and by the way, if you can't get out this week to get brushes or paper, um, I don't know if we have spare brushes in that classroom. Um, I can't say for right now. So you might just be doing yourself a favor to get over to Michael's and get some of those supplies. Okay. You know, shouldn't, shouldn't cost you more than about 20 bucks. Okay. All right. Back to the water. So I'm unscrewing this a little bit and it has a dropper here and a little um, a dropper that acts as a plunger. So I'm gonna screw this back in. I'm going to pinch this, let the ink get up into the uh, dropper. And then I'm just gonna squirt some into my first cup of water. I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna do that three more times. I should get the uh, consistency that I want. Um, it's not an exact science, so I might take some experimenting on uh, your part, okay, when you get into this on Thursday. All right, got my board ready to go. And when we start this, you know, it's, it's, this is, one of the few times where we have an advantage to using those big bulky tables in class because we can kind of hold our boards like this because when we work on these you can imagine that gravity is not going to work to our advantage okay so you can see my setup there in the frame i've got my shoes set up i don't think i'm going to draw both of them together for this this drawing anyway I might for the next okay all right I'm starting with the thickest brush okay and uh, we're gonna go at it okay so you want to start light for this because I mean, of course, we can't do any racing here, right? And here's something that you might notice. There was a lot of liquid here, so I'm going over that again, and I am sponging it out, so to speak, on some paper towels that I've got right here, okay? Still enough to kind of play around with, okay? So, again, just like gesturing, 
I'm getting a general shape of this, trying to get some of the action, not much action in a static object. However, there is a lot of angles and converging shapes kind of kind of gives suggestions of action. And I don't want to just give myself this generic shape. I'm looking at the uh, grooves. I'm looking at those folds. When I say action, that's what I'm trying to capture. Looks like you can see it pretty well. So it's another nice feature about a brush like this, uh, you can either go really, really thick, really thick like that, or thin. I don't know if you can see it there, but uh, yeah, you can get variety, which uh, helps you out in uh, certain circumstances. Thinking a little bit about value, I'm squinting down the sole of that shoe it is lighter than the uh, than the rest of it, so uh, I don't want to go too dark there. Okay. Um, what else do I want to do before I? Leave this alone for a few minutes. I guess that's basically it. Okay. So there's that. Okay. Still pretty wet. If I were to add more ink into this, it wouldn't really do anything. It, it would be kind of out of control. So I'm going to take this off. And I'm going to set it aside. <clears throat> so, sheets. Open this down. All right. work on this other shoe here. A lot going on. I'm moving my board to uh, contain that liquid. A lot of action with those laces there. Sometimes it helps to count the eyelets. A lot of overlapping shapes, a lot of uh, variety of light and dark happening. So you want to be as light as you can with this because once you go absolute black there's no going back it's what you're going to be stuck with Trying to 
Let's look at those folds again. Coming down to the stitching. Got a lot of ink right there. Got some nice cast shadow happening. I'm going to kill some of this white, and as I do, first of all, I'm doing it with something lighter so that I can still see the marks that I made before, all those little notations. I'm actually brushing where I soaked up the um, some of the excess liquid before. And um, it's working pretty nicely just to give me give me some lighter marks. Okay. All right. There's our second one. Let's check in on that first drawing. See where we're at with it now. We might have to do a third one. Which, you know, it's okay. Still a little wetter than I would like, so I'm going to keep that one aside and actually start a third one. Um. I suppose if some of you wanted to try uh, drying it off with a blow dryer, I mean, a hair dryer, I mean, I, I've never tried that before, um, and I you know, prefer it to be a little more natural of a process, but, you know, you could try that if you want. Okay, for this third one, I'm actually going to go with my bigger brush here. I'm going to try and get both of these shoes in the picture plane. Doesn't look like it's going to work, but I'll have some indication of that top shoe. Being a little quicker with this, a little more loose, a little more general. This uh, brush does allow for that. Now, if you wanted to try a brush similar to this, I did see some larger brushes like this one in some of those toolboxes in our classroom. So maybe you guys will want to try it. I don't know.
Now this, I got this going a little bit quicker than uh, the other two, okay? A um, little bit thinner. Um, let me, you know what, I'm gonna switch gears. I'm gonna actually, let's, let's have some fun with this. I'm going to jump ahead, actually. So once I've... So I have basically a layout, right? I've got that blueprint of our composition here. Now, I'm going to jump the gun here and do something a little advanced. And um, for this... Uh, I'll show you guys what I'm, I want you guys to do for this uh, next layer uh, when I work on the other two. But this one, what I'm going to do, I'm going to dip this directly into the ink. Now, I'm not going to have you guys do this, but you can see how I will handle this. And, uh, you know, <laughs> I might just end up making a mess of things. Oh boy. <laughs> so I think the idea here is to kind of um, generalize the values. So we want to identify What's the absolute black up there? And there isn't too many areas where it is completely black. It's going to be helpful helpful for all of you to remember what you learned with negative shapes especially when it comes to these shoelaces you're not drawing shoelaces you know all this black is not the shoelaces it's the space in between the shoelaces So keep that in mind. And also when it comes to text, don't try and literally write out what you're reading, okay? Think of it all as just abstract shapes and deal with the space in between those shapes. Okay, where, where else can I go with this? Soaking it up. a little lighter than what I was dealing with just a few seconds ago. See if I can spread out a little of this black down here.
bit messy. I feel like I'm, I don't know, capturing the quote unquote spirit of the thing. Those, man, those yellow and yellow stitching. It's a lot of detail here. It's a lot of detail when you really look at things. This can just go on forever if you let it. So again, with that stitching, I'm not drawing the stitching. It's the space in between the stitching. Okay. Um... There's those eyelets. Again, counting those eyelets sometimes it can help. Well, I think I'm going to leave this alone for a few minutes. Um, we're going to go back to the uh, first one. And I'm sure it's ready to go by now. A little drier. Be able to deal with this a little bit more. Just looking at the time. Okay. okay, so I'm not going to go go black the way I did before. Um, what I'm going to do is add a little more ink to this first cup that I was working with. Okay, close this up because we don't want ink spilled in our work area. Um, let's see, I'm gonna go back to the thicker brush I was working with, okay. Wash that off a tiny bit. Wash this off as well. Okay, I'm going to test my marks over here. Um, 
something I've done in the past. I've had a separate sheet where I test marks like this. Um, if you don't want, you know, these added marks on your drawing, you might end up with something nice, something you might want to give your mother. So you can have separate, separate sheet. Or maybe half a sheet, okay, something. Now I'm doing this, realizing that I want it a little darker. Putting some more ink in. Remember when I said it wasn't an exact science. Sole up at the front is darker than the back. Boy, big dot. Now I'm just kind of generically, you can say, putting those spaces between the stitching, not really looking at what I'm doing. I guess just trying to create the impression of it. Okay. Okay. Dark stuff here, but this is okay. I'm up into the leather now. There's a lot there. Gotta hold my board up. Gravity will not be working with you. <laughs> <laughs> 